Can the United States successfully decouple itself from the country of China? Maybe the better question is, should the United States decouple itself from China? Now, the answer to both of these questions are very important for not only the countries of America and China, but also the entire world. Let's discuss it. Hey everybody, my name is Cyrus Jansen. I'm an American expat that has been living around the world for many years now, and I have been able to spend a tremendous amount of time living and working in mainland China. China remains one of my greatest passions in life because I have learned so much from the country of China, and I truly believe that a stronger relationship with China is in the best interest of America. However, if we look at the recent events over the past few years, we can see that not many people do agree with this, and there has certainly been a rising anti-China sentiment growing in the West. For example, many people come to my YouTube channel and they'll say, Cyrus, I don't agree with your statement. When China and the United States work together, the world wins. I think that we really need to remove ourselves from everything Chinese. We should be boycotting Chinese products. We should be closing down American factories. We should be doing everything we can to make America great again. Now, as a proud American citizen, I certainly agree that we need to improve America. It's in my best interest as an American to see a stronger America. However, my philosophy is a little bit different. I actually believe that in order to achieve this, we live in a global economy, and it's important that we continue to grow our relationships around the world. Most importantly, with the fastest growing economy and the fastest growing country in the world, the country of China, that has been a tremendous benefit to American life and our lifestyle for decades. Now, just yesterday, I was reading an article on the Wall Street Journal entitled, China Overtakes the U.S. as the World's Leading Destination for Foreign Direct Investment. Now, this article is fascinating because for the first time in decades, China overtook the United States as the worldwide leader in foreign direct investment. Let's take a look at some of the data. Have a look at this chart that was sourced from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, and we can see that in foreign direct investment, in the country of the United States decreased by 50% from 2019 to 2020. Other markets like Brazil, also a 50% decline, even Canada, Singapore, huge declines. In fact, the only countries that were able to grow were the countries of China and India. Now, foreign investment in the United States peaked in 2016 at $472 billion, when foreign investment in China was $134 billion. Since then, investment in China has continued to rise, while in the U.S. it has fallen every year since 2017. The Trump administration also gave a tremendous amount of pressure on Chinese investment companies that wanted to invest into America. Trump made it very clear that any Chinese investment into America would be extremely scrutinized because of a potential security threat to the United States of America. Now let's take a look at the data and see how this has actually affected this balance between the two countries. In this graph of foreign direct investment over the last 20 years, we can see that China in the red has a consistent increase over the last 20 years. Now America is a little bit more cyclical with some years being very high, some years being a little bit lower. But again, the key point to take away for this graph is the fact that China overtook the United States for foreign direct investment in the year 2020. Now, I do want to point out one of the obvious reasons why China overtook the United States for foreign direct investment last year, and that was simply because China was able to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic much more efficiently and effectively than the United States. In the long term, I know that there will be more foreign direct investment into America, but the most interesting thing is, is that as the world is shifting towards a more anti-China mentality, some of the biggest and most powerful companies in America and Europe are actually doing the opposite. Instead of decoupling from China, they're doubling down and increasing their investments into the country of China. Let's take a look at some data and some of the recent transactions from some of the most amazing and successful companies in the world. Let's start with one of America's most successful companies, Walmart, and their recent decision to invest $425 million in the city of Wuhan. Now, this is an amazing story because Wuhan, of course, as we know, was the first city that was affected by the COVID-19 pandemic in the country of China. But Walmart really took a leap of faith here by investing over a half a billion dollars in the city of Wuhan. Wuhan is very centrally located. It is the capital city of the Hubei province, and it is going to be very important for the company of Walmart as they continue to expand their China operations. 
Tesla, one of America's fastest growing companies that saw its stock shoot up an amazing 1000% in 2020 alone, has now decided to expand its Gigafactory in Shanghai and will start producing a new compact SUV as early as 2021. This is quite amazing because Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, has been very upfront and very vocal about how much he loves working with the Chinese government. He feels that they are very innovative and they of course have supported Tesla as there is a tremendous consumer demand for high-end electronic vehicles like Tesla. One of my favorite companies in the world, Starbucks, recently just announced that they will be investing 130 million US dollars in the Chinese city of Kunshan, located one hour west of Shanghai, to build a brand new coffee roasting and intelligent warehouse. PepsiCo this summer just announced that it will buy Chinese snack brand B and Cherry for 705 million dollars. Now the interesting thing about these specific American companies is that they are selling products to the Chinese consumers and realize the healthy demand for the market inside of China. But it's not just limited to companies that are selling products, it also includes some of America's biggest financial service companies. In this article from Bloomberg last month, Goldman Sachs has now applied for 100% ownership of its China joint venture. Now this is quite an amazing development on business in China. For decades, foreign financial firms were never allowed to own the majority stake in their companies in China. They had to go through a joint venture and the Chinese side would always own the majority stake. However, in 2019, Chinese regulators changed this law and now foreign companies can not only own a majority stake, but they can apply for and seek 100% control of their foreign company in China. This is huge news and this is what Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan are doing. They're investing more money into China because they realize the need for their services in one of the biggest markets in the world. But is this limited to just American companies? Not exactly. Let's take a look at some companies from Europe as well. How about the German sportswear giant Adidas, who has recently decided to invest more into enhancing its supply chain capacity in China? A move industry experts say show the confidence of the local economy and the rising demand for healthy lifestyles and fitness products. Britain's pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca recently just launched a $1 billion fund to expand its research work in the country of China. Again, look at these companies, the exact opposite is happening. More foreign direct investment is going into China. Companies are not decoupling, they're actually increasing their exposure to China because they realize China is such an incredible market and a very important piece for the future of our world economy. For some further perspective, I want you to take a look at this article from Ray Dalio. Now, Ray Dalio is a billionaire investor and he believes that China will vie to become a world financial center. In this article from the Financial Times, Mr. Dalio says that China already has the world's second largest capital markets and I think they will eventually vie for having the world's financial center. Throughout history, the largest trading countries evolved into having the global financial center and the global reserve currency. When you see the transition from one empire to another, from the Dutch to the British to the American, to me, it just looks like that all over again. Now again, Ray Dalio is a billionaire investor. He is one of the most brilliant minds. He is very bullish on the country of China. So when I look at, for instance, these random YouTube comments that come in and these random comments from Americans saying, you know what, China is the greatest enemy in the world. I think I'd rather value the opinion of some of the most successful businessmen in the world and some of the most successful companies in the world and what their actions are doing. Their actions are showing that they're putting their money into China because they realize that the future of our global economy largely depends on a very successful and healthy China. Now it goes without saying that for the future of China and United States relationships, all eyes are looking to Washington DC right now. And most importantly, what is Joe Biden going to do with China moving forward? Now I think for all United States presidents, the first hundred days are very important. During the first hundred days of the presidency, the new president is establishing some new rules and some new pathways for the future of his country. Now we've seen in the first few days that President Biden has been very active in starting to retract some of the bills and some of the projects that Donald Trump was moving forward. I, for one, as a China watcher, am very much looking forward to seeing what Joe Biden is going to do with the future between the United States and China. However, I wanna bring in a recent article that I read that really shares some interesting viewpoints from the Chinese perspective on the future of the United States and China. In this recent article from the South China Morning Post entitled, China Says New Window of Hope is Open in Relations with the United States, 
The Foreign Minister of the People's Republic of China, Mr. Wang Yi, has this to say, China-U.S. relations have come to a new crossroads, and a new window of hope is opening. We hope that the next U.S. administration will return to a sensible approach, resume dialogue with China, restore normalcy to the bilateral relations, and restart cooperation. Now, I've been studying the United States-China relationship for well over 14 years, and again, I believe that this is a very pivotal time in our history between these two great countries. I, for one, am very excited to see what the new prospects are going to be. I don't think it's going to be easy, and I'm interested to see what Joe Biden's approach to China is. Now, to get a viewpoint for what the Chinese think, let's take a look at some further comments. We know that some in the United States are uneasy about China's rapid development. However, the best way to keep one's lead is through constant self-improvement, not by blocking others' development. We don't need a world where China becomes another United States. This is neither rational nor feasible. Rather, the United States should try to make itself a better country, and China will surely become its better self. Now, I think these comments at first might be a little bit hard for many Americans to take. You know, obviously the United States has struggled with the COVID-19 pandemic. We have seen the economy really take a hit. We have seen millions of Americans really suffer through this. And I think it's really important that we look to actually expand our relationships around the world. Again, in a global recession, we don't wanna be decoupling and burning bridges with countries around the world. This is actually a time that we wanna be building bridges with other countries. And I, for one, think that we really need to strengthen the relationship with China. I just stand by my comments. I do believe that a strong relationship between the United States and China is in the benefit for both countries and the entire world. Now, recently, Chinese President Xi Jinping gave a speech at the Davos Agenda, and I'd like to share with you a quote that he mentioned. No global problem can be solved by any one country alone. There must be global action, global response, and global cooperation. Now, this comment, of course, was in relation to the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic that all of us are still dealing with, including the country of China. There has been recent outbreaks in the province of Hebei, also in the Chinese city of Shanghai. And it's really important that all of us around the world, as we continue to deal with COVID-19, learn to work together. I don't know what the solution is for COVID-19. Maybe it is a global QR tracking system. Maybe it is a global vaccine. But whatever it is, we need to work together to find the solution. But it's not just for important things like COVID-19. There's other issues that also need the cooperation of the two largest countries in the world, the United States and China. America now has a president that believes in climate change. And as China and America are both committed to reducing their carbon emissions, this is something that is very important because in order for the world to experience a significant decrease in carbon emissions, it's very important that the two biggest emitters, China and America, learn to work together. Again, this goes back to my main point and something that I say in almost every video that when the United States and China work together, every country in the world will benefit. So let me go back to the original statements that I opened this video with. Can the United States successfully decouple from China? I believe the answer to that question is no, because we live in a global economy. Over the last three decades, American companies have spent billions and billions of dollars investing into infrastructure and factories into China. It is not in the best interest of American companies and the American people, frankly, to decouple from China. The American lifestyle that we live today is a direct result of a great relationship with China for decades on end. Now to answer that second question, should the United States decouple from China? I'm pretty sure you know my answer if you've made it to this point in the video, and that of course is no. There is bigger things to work on, and it's very important that these two amazing countries of China and America learn to work together. We need to solve COVID-19. We need to solve global warming. We need both countries to be a shining light for the future, not only for these two countries, but really the entire world. It's really as simple as that. Let's learn to work with China. Let's learn to improve ourselves as Americans. It's in the best interest of everybody for America and China to succeed, and I believe that happens when the two of them work together. Everybody, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to spend it with me here on YouTube. I have a tremendous passion for my home country of America. I have a tremendous passion for the country of China. I want these two to be better. It is what motivates me and drives me to make these YouTube videos every single week. I want to thank you all for your continued support. If you are interested in actually joining our team and receiving exclusive weekly video updates from me, check us out on Patreon. You can join our thriving community on there where we have a lot of fun each week discussing future videos 
videos and topics. Also, make sure you're subscribed to my free newsletter down below. The link is down in the description. Thank you all for your continued support, and we'll see you in next week's video.